Welcome to this presentation of a case study using Graphisoft Archicad BIM integrated with an ISV for dynamic simulation modeling. Introducing myself, I am Raffaele De Angelis, Sustainability Architect at HLM Architects. The case study is a residential redevelopment in London for 350 dwellings and we will see elements from phase one and phase two of the project. Archicad beam is very similar to the Revit beam in its structure and it is based on a zone hierarchy and uses extensively IFC for export and import and that is what we use in this project. In addition to IFC there is a very important tool within Archicad which is called Eco Designer. Using Eco Designer you can define all aspects related to the thermal and energy model within Archicad including geometry, construction, systems, the occupancy and the profiles, thermal zones, etc. And finally, you can export directly via GBXML. And BIM is not just a geometry exercise. What is most important, perhaps, is a very strong database connection between the software. We make extensive use of the database features present both in IS and Archicad in order to establish this connection. So, going back to the case study and considering the carbon emission reduction hierarchy, we have very little scope for renewable energy on site, and so we were focused on the billing and be clean steps in the hierarchy. And that means that maximum efficiency must be obtained through the building design and by the system efficiency design. Now, new government and local authorities' targets are becoming more and more challenging also in the residential sector. And a higher performance requires a strong integrated design, especially when you cannot use renewables. The problem is that integrated design is not correctly measured by simplified methods, and simplified methods is what is being currently used in the residential sector. In our case, the London Plan Authority requires a 35% further reduction on carbon emissions set by Part 2013. And we found that compliance with the London Plan can only be met by a design which is supported and assessed through a dynamic simulation modeling. So the integrated design strategy is based first on a passive design strategy, which is including solar access distribution, daylighting, overshadowing control, interaction with the surrounding environment, and so on. Then we added a uh, whole house mechanical ventilation with heat recovery in every unit. And then most of the units are equipped with a sun space, a winter garden, which is providing an additional amenity space and a few benefits in terms of thermal and energy control. These systems are connected and controlled on the basis of indoor environmental quality aspects. And finally, the whole development is supplied by a community system which is fueled by a CHP. We are using dynamic simulation to support, design and assess the building. Now, as you can see, there is a substantial difference from the sub-worksheet output and the dynamic simulation output. The DSM output is 78% better than the sub in this direct comparison. There are several reasons for this, several factors contribute to this. We are going to highlight two of these factors. We will see in detail two IS modules, Macroflow for the winter gardens and Apache HVAC for the mechanical ventilation system. But again, eventually there is not a real separation between these two elements, as they actually interact with each other. So we have the winter gardens that provide a number of benefits allowing for a dynamic control of the facade by the users and in different configurations. And they provide improved U-values, solar gains, control, fabric air tightness improvements, noise control and an additional amenity space available to the users all year round. And then we have the mechanical ventilation with heat recovery which bypassing the windows provides higher rates of fresh air which is preconditioned by the heat recovery. The heat recovery in this case is by extracting the heat accumulated in the used air prior to its exhaustion to the outdoor. 
and passing this heat to the fresh air, which is then supplied to the rooms. And here is a scheme of the simple integration of the two systems. And we see on the left hand side the fresh air which is taken into the winter garden, preheated and then led directly into the heat recovery unit, where heat is recovered from used air and then fresh air is supplied to the rooms. To simulate this, we used two modules in IS, Macroflow and Apache HBAC. Macroflow simulates airflow patterns around and through the buildings uh, operating through openings. We set three types of windows, main windows, uh, the standard ones and the ones on the winter gardens, on the external and on the internal side. And in order to replicate the user behavior, we set some shadows according to what could be the user pattern there. So they will tend to operate windows when it is necessary and when the outdoor temperature is uh, at least higher than 16 degrees so that it is comfortable. We also included some inefficiencies there uh, in order to replicate user behavior more consistently. At the same time, through Apache HBAC, we simulate the mechanical ventilation system. We see here a simple natural scheme where here fresh air is inlet and then taken to the winter garden, from there to the heat recovery unit, and then supply to the rooms, which are multiplexed here. That means that there are multiple rooms in this scheme. And finally, exhaust air is taken back to the heat recovery unit and uh, exhausted to the outdoor. This is a very simple network scheme. But Apache HVAC allows a very detailed settings of the manufacturer data, so the results are very accurate. Then, since every winter garden is different in its position and the solar radiation will be different, we set uh, a specific network scheme for every unit there, as you can see at the bottom of the page. And this system is complementary to the Windows system that is uh, in a sort of mixed mode uh, operational system. That means that it will kick in whenever the outdoor temperature is too low to be used directly. And so it will operate whenever outdoor temperature is more or less below 16 degrees. And this here is a simulation snapshot on a winter day illustrating the temperature sequence as air passes through the different systems. We see, and we start with the outside temperature in blue, then I passes through the winter garden, and then passes through the heat recovery system, reaching almost the required temperature. And finally, we have the internal temperature within the rooms, which is provided either by radiators or internal gains or solar gains. And then we see the same pattern in three different locations, three different winter gardens in the building. The differences are due to the uh, position and to a different indeed solar radiation happening there. What is interesting is on the right hand side you see a peak due to the radiation happening in there. And on the top one, which is the top floor uh, apartment level floor, uh, you see the, the peak is cut due to the fact that somebody has opened the window there. And the output performance is then taken back into the beam environment as a support information for design. And this is a key element in the beam process. In fact, from the same thermal model, a given one, an in-depth analysis of the available data, plus a number of variations that can be applied to the same model in terms of fabric, operational design, permeability, etc can provide a very important information basis for decision making, especially when this is done within a life cycle costing exercise. BIM is too often confused with 3D modeling, while the most important aspect is the ability to exchange information in the form of shadows and tables, and this can be properly done through the features that are present both in ARCHICAD and IS. And as a matter of fact, 
The geometry export will be done in a limited number of times during the project as it is not efficient having a continuous geometry update while perhaps it's much more important being able to use large quantity of data to inform the design and then update the geometry at given steps when design is consolidated. This chart and this mapped graphic present an example of the information we use during design. This is a, a graphic from an ongoing process and it's not the final design. And it shows the space eating demand performance per square meter per year. The bottoms in orange uh, are the ones which were exceeding 15 kilowatt hour per square meter per year. And then this has been optimized to a more homogeneous performance in the current design. And this is the final performance that we are currently reaching and which is subject to further improvement. And you can see the, the four columns, the first four columns are four types of apartments, basement, uh, duplex, then the ground floor flats. Third column are the flats between level one and four, which are the ones with the winter gardens. And the fourth column is the penthouses apartments. The latter column on the right hand side is the one reporting the average performance for the whole development. And as you can see, it's quite a good performance there, especially if compared to a few reference values as the uh, recommended 39 kilowatt hour per square meter per year of the zero carbon home scheme or the 15 of the passive house scheme or from a recent survey of uh, exemplary solar housing in Europe providing an average performance of 10. But what is most important is that this performance was obtained without any special specification in the fabric or in the glazing or in the eye tightness. We have uh, more or less standard values there, still good of course. It's interesting that we are getting this with a standard double glazing while a passive house scheme would have required a triple glazing as mandatory. And this is what we think is the difference provided through detailed analysis. In conclusion, some important benefits of the beam applied to DSM are that you can consider all the relevant aspects and systems together in a single process, that you can have an exact information on local condition and performance in different parts of the building for a truly responsive design, that resources can be properly allocated where these are more effective with substantial savings and, uh, most of all, allowing for an effective value engineering process. The bottom line is that BEAM DSM provides a comprehensive dynamic analysis, confirming that the performance of the whole system is significantly higher than the cumulative performance of the single parts. Thank you very much.